And welcome back to another episode of the Credit Authority. Once again, I am your host, Rhonda Kolch, and I am so glad that you tuned in today. We always want to start our segment by thanking our sponsor. Thank you so much to Equity First. If you are experiencing credit and or financial challenges for yourself or for your business, consider reaching out to any one of their trained professionals. They are bilingual, nationwide, and waiting for your call. They could be reached at 631 714-4822. Now that we got that out of the way, all those little logistics, we have an amazing show today speaking to all different women in different aspects of business. And our final guest today is Renee Wagner, and she is the founder and producer of The Mag Lifestyle Magazine. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Rhonda. This is This is great. I know that you are so busy, so I appreciate you taking the time to call in today. But we always love a little bit of diversity on our show. And I think that you have so much to really educate our audience on. So let's start with explaining to me the fundamentals and the foundation of how and why you created your brand. Um, I think, you know, it all goes back to uh, we all have a story. We all have something in our life that you know, kind of changed who we are or kind of dictated the life that we would have in a sense. And you kind of carry that with you in that mindset in your life. And I think with me, that's kind of what happened. I needed to kind of share my story. I didn't know where or how or who cared even to listen to my story. And I know there's power in that, whether you can help one person or many. And that was my goal. That was my goal to develop a platform that I could help other women, maybe other kids that might have gone through what I went through and just really creating like a community or a foundation for people or somewhere to go um, and kind of share those stories. And that's why I created the Mag Inspired Lifestyle so that there's many people inspiring other people. And that's the goal with the Mag is just to really inspire each other to kind of utilize what your story is and what you do in life to help other people. So I know that you've interviewed some amazing people since the magazine's inception. Has there been any one story more particular than another that has created a bigger impact on you? Oh, wow. Uh, So many great stories. I think, you know, because we're a broad lifestyle, um, if I dove into the women empowerment side of it, um, there's so many. So there's a woman, she came over here as an immigrant. She... Uh, enlisted in the Navy, and she became a Navy uh, reserve now. Um, but she developed a passion to design clothes. So she went to school, she designed uh, clothes, and now she has a, a line called Veteran Couture. And she designs women's couture dresses and beautiful fashion line all geared towards the U.S. military. And she uses these old camouflage you know, uniform to design these really brilliant, uh, beautiful designs. And her story is inspiring to me because, you know, she came here with nothing and she served our country. And then she decided to find a passion outside of that to then serve our country. And she gives back in so many ways to our military. And I think, you know, that's one of many stories that I would never have known if I didn't start doing what I was doing. You know, you are not just a fantastic publisher of your magazine, but you're a mom as well. And one of the things that we've been speaking about today is that work-life balance. So how do you embrace what you're doing and your time? And how are you making time for your family when you are so focused on making sure that you are following your passion? You know, I think it's a challenge that we go through no matter how much we try to balance our life. I think it's one of those things that you learn as you go and what isn't working, what works, and, you know, where things are falling short. And I think with me, it was letting go of the things that I knew I couldn't do anymore. I didn't have time for. And so it was one of those things like getting a house cleaner, you know, okay, so now I think maybe I'll do that. So I have that left one thing on my plate. And I think it was letting go of certain things of trying to do everything myself, Um, that kind of mindset was hard to let go because you, you want to be all those things. You want to not let go of anything because you don't want to fall short in anything that you're doing. And so I think that's how I found some balance was 
delegating and letting go and finding the help that I could get when I could get it. You know, there was never, you know, there was not a day that, you know, back when I started, I could get house cleaner. That wasn't realistic. As those things unfold, you find ways to kind of let go and find the balance that you need. And for me, it was one of those necessities. And I think that's how I structured it. And, you know, just letting go of the guilt, I think, you know, we are so hard on ourselves as moms. Because we want, like I said, we want to be everything to everybody, and we can't. (laughs) (laughs) No, sometimes you. Sometimes it's not possible. When you, you know, the the magazine is a few years old at this point. But whenever somebody starts a brand new journey, there's always somebody that is not as happy for you as maybe you feel that they should have. In the people that you spend your time with, was there anybody that was not supportive? of the journey that you were looking to take? And if so, how did you handle that? You know, I I had a family member who didn't see my vision, kind of saw it as a hobby or a fluff and a, you know, you need to get like a, one of those, you need to get a real job. And, you know, this isn't what you should be doing. You should be doing this. Um, You know, I think it's one of those things that no one sees your vision. No one feels what you feel. Um, And I think, you know, it was hard at times to know that I didn't have that support. And then there was indirect, you know, people that I met along the way who weren't really supportive because they, they felt that they were intimidated and they wanted to kind of jump in and, and, and take that light. And I never really needed the light. And, you know, I found those days challenging because I didn't understand. I was there to give, I was there to connect. I just wanted to share what I was doing with everybody. Um, And some people didn't really see it that way. They just wanted to kind of come in and, and take or, you know, undo or tell me to do it differently. And I think knowing my value of what I was doing, I didn't want to be a superficial brand. I wanted it to have a mission behind it. I didn't want my time away from my family to be put into something that wasn't mission driven or something that I could be behind in a positive way. And I think that kind of kept me grounded and and my goal of what I was doing and knowing you know, what I was doing was going to help somebody, whether it was one person or not, I knew it was going to, it was going to do that one day. And so that kind of kept me focused on where I'm at today. Now, whenever somebody's starting a business, right, there's always this creative side, but there's also that part of us where we say, all right, I'm taking that leap and I'm going to go from a hobby to a career, right? Like we've been talking about when you wanted to really launch the brand, tell me some of the fears that you had with that launch? It was the fear of time, right? Time is precious. Life is precious. We all don't know what time we have. So I think it was the time that I put in away from my kids, um, whether I was present or not in their company, you know, working and and still being with them. And I was very fortunate. I was a stay-at-home mom. So I got, I had a lot of time with them prior and during building this out. And so I think the fear is that, wow, someday you know, will that be that regret? Like, wow, it didn't go the way I planned. Or should I put my time in other things that might have been more important? Or, you know, financially, is this not the right decision for us? And I think those are the fears I have. Time and the financial commitment, you know, in the scope of life where you want to put your money and invest it in the right things and in your time. I think the time is that one fear, right? Like you can't get that back. And so. we and we deal with that all day, right? If it, it would be a fair statement to say that when you are an entrepreneur and you are running a family and you are running a business, that we just don't turn our clocks off, right? We're always we're always there to be on the go because that's just what people expect, you know, of us. Mm-hmm. So I know that you have done some tremendous work with the magazine. How does somebody follow? you and how does somebody get to maybe sponsor or be involved with the work that you're doing? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are on social media. We started as a digital brand and now we are definitely moving into, um, you know, the event space. We have some events coming up, great opportunity for sponsorship. Um, We're broadening our our publication. Uh, We're doing more than a quarter issue. So we're going to have multiple opportunities for um, you know, weekly, monthly articles where we can bring in some advertisers. So we are on the magazine lifestyle.com is our website, all spelled out. 
And we're also on the magazine underscore lifestyle on Instagram. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Once again, we are speaking with Renee Wagner, and she is the, I guess we call you founder and producer of Lifestyle the Mag. So stay tuned. We'll be bringing you updates on next week's show. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of this station, JVC Broadcasting Management, or its sponsors.